You see, maybe shaving just wasn't a good call. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Ah yes, another end of year list video. I'm having so much fun writing, recording, and editing all of these. It's just truly a blessing. In this video, I'll be listing off my 20 favorite tracks of 2021. It's just as straightforward as that. This is not to be confused as a review or me saying that these are the definitive best tracks of the year. Instead, these are just my personal favorites, so let's just get right into it because I am tired. Kicking things off is Montero, Call Me By Your Name by Lil Nas X. Honestly, I don't have that much to say other than this is just a great pop song. Everything from the catchy hook to the controversial music video, Lil Nas X knocks it out of the park. I love the production and vocal layering throughout Plus, the lyrics and beat are really, really enjoyable. Spy comes in at number 19 with Habitual Offender. This is the title track off of their EP, which just so happens to be one of my favorite EPs of the year as well. Easily one of the most all-around solid hardcore releases this year, Habitual Offender addresses police brutality over this heavy-ass instrumental. It kicks ass and has an important message, so what else can you really even ask for? My 18th favorite track of 2021 is Seeds to Sow by Scowl. Completely out of left field in comparison to their latest record, this song is much more poppy, leaning away from their hardcore sound, but they do so gracefully and beautifully accompanied by lush vocals and saxophones. But it is vocalist Cat Moss's performance that truly sets it apart. Number 17 sees Curse the Knife enter the scene with Pissing Off the Neighbors. Easily one of the best shoegaze tracks of the year, the guitar is heavy and pensive while the vocals drone over the driving instrumental. It's a great one to bob your head along to with your eyes closed as you soak up the fuzzy goodness. Next up is They Hate Change with Faux Leather. If you followed this channel for a little bit, you'll know how much I love this Florida based outfit. Gearing up for a new album drop in 2022, they released this single in anticipation. The drum machine is sublime while Andre and Vaughn coat the beat with their signature blend of vocal cadences. The lyrics are impeccable as well. More than anything though, Faux Leather is getting me so excited for their upcoming record. Fall Apart by Daniel Knox is my 15th favorite song of 2021. Jesus man, what a remarkable track. Knox's vocals are heavenly, but the kind of heavenly that still has a touch of hell to it, making it more human than any other vocalist could. This track is just heartbreaking between between the lamenting lyrics and drowning piano, it's unrelenting in its sadness. And because of that, I love it. Of course, a song by Nothing would make it onto this list as Amber Gambler from their Great Dismal's B-side release swoops in at number 14. The more that I listen to The Great Dismal, the more that I fall in love with it, yet somehow Amber Gambler was left on the cutting room floor. This song is just as good as any of the other Dismal tracks, if not even better. The strings sound perfect, while the warbly guitar riff is loose enough to feel like the mix wasn't even properly done. And when we're talking about nothing, that's a good thing. God damn it, I cannot wait to see this band play live again. Next up is Tyler the Creator with Sweet, I Thought You Wanted to Dance at number 13. Team. Closing in at 10 minutes, this track is an absolute trip. With two distinct sections, Tyler conjures up a song that is bursting with color and character. Honestly, it wasn't until this track came on during my first listen of Call Me If You Get Lost that I truly realized how great that record is. Sweet, I Thought You Wanted to Dance is yet another legendary song in Tyler's discography. Number 12 goes to Black Dresses with Can't Keep It Together. This riveting and truthful outpouring is the perfect closing track to their record Forever In Your Heart. The glitchy beat is complemented by the death-defying bass and nasally vocals. The build-up is immense and absolutely worthwhile. The near stream of conscious lyrics are also fantastic and so relatable. If you honestly thought that I wouldn't mention Silk Sonic smoking out the window, then you are sorely mistaken. This track is easily the most catchy cut from this year. I mean seriously, the hook lives rent-free in my pea-sized brain. The instrumental is just incredible while the production is over the top and grandiose. It's like an entire theatrical performance packaged together in one short song. Lord, please give us more Silk Sonic. Getting into the top 10, we have Home Is Where, sewn together from the membrane of the Great Sea Cucumber, which is simply a great track name. But the song itself is awesome too, finding a wide range of energies in its 4 minute 45 second runtime. Most notably, the building crescendo of chanting, I want to pet every puppy that I see, until unleashing into this power violence riot. A killer cut from a band that I have very high hopes on. At the 9 spot is Soul Glow with Bombs, aka Back On My Bullshit. Without a doubt, one of the greatest hardcore bands on the planet right now, Soul Glow throws us a heater with this cut. The guttural screams throughout are utterly insane. The instrumentals blow the doors off this track and make sure that you know that they are here to stay. I saw this song performed live when they played with nothing in Atlantic City, and I was ready to run through a brick wall to say the absolute least. I love this band, I love this song, and I am absolutely ecstatic that they will be releasing a new album next year. Number 8 on this list is Bolt Swallower by Gulch. This came through in full force from their split with Tsunami, leaving a 
scorching trail in its wake. It's harsh and unrelenting, pushing the absolute limits of whatever equipment was used to record it. While the vocals are incredible, it's the percussion that stands out most to me, devastatingly destroying this track. For a hardcore song that runs over four minutes in length, it is still fresh and engaging. A killer track from one of hardcore's finest. Please, please, please don't let their breakup be real. Speaking of hardcore, number seven is Underwater Boy by Turnstile. This is such a complex track in terms of its soundscape and like, only it soundscape. Like, how the hell do you meld all these different sounds together to create such a unique track? Like, I know I just had a segue about hardcore to lead into this song, but this song is barely hardcore, yet it feels like a disservice not to at least mention hardcore when you say its name. I don't know, I'm having a tough time with this one, but at the end of the day, I know that I don't need to break this song down to know that I enjoy the absolute hell out of it. The slow burning and passionate Stone Fruit by Arm and Hammer takes the sixth spot. First things first, you could have just released the instrumental, and I'm pretty sure it still would have found its way on this list. The synth that slinks around leaves me feeling reminiscent of a time that never existed. It's simply from another world. Not to mention the lyrics are drenched in emotion, talking about how the comforts in our lives may be boring, but are necessary backbones for us to survive, which is a rather sad truth. Stone Fruit is easily one of the best album closing tracks this year. Next up at number five, it's actually a cover of John Prine's In Spite of Ourselves. This time it is performed by Viagra Boys featuring Amy Taylor. Listen, I'm as surprised as you are that a cover made it on to this list, but it is simply too good to deny. The performances of Sebastian Murphy and Amy Taylor are playful while still holding an air of seriousness and hope. The slight adjustment in the song's construction is also a wonderful element, breathing new life into a classic song. Great, great, great cover. Coming in at the four spot is Military Gun with Don't Pick Up the Phone. I'm a sucker for a powerful guitar riff and belting vocals that sing about drug use. But in all seriousness, the song does touch on paranoia and anxiety in a straightforward and relatable way. It's a brutal honest song that doesn't rely on frills or extra crap. This is just good, straightforward, hardcore punk that is effective and enjoyable. Taking third place on this list is Don't Talk About It, Your Weird Complex by Hey I Love You. First things first, I officially stand the Nintendo core scene going on right now, but the pinnacle of this fifth wave emo movement has to be this song. The range that this track shows between the actual loudness of the song itself to switching between gorgeous vocals and violent screamo. The song's construction is just a roller coaster that never seems to stop. The topic of not addressing your friend's toxic traits because you don't want to confront them is something that we all go through in life. I don't know, I just love this song very, very much. The runner-up this year is Parking Lot by The Weather Station. Let me just start off by saying that this is the most enjoyable song on this list, despite the fact that the lyrics are rather depressing. I adore the vocals, the simple percussion, and the addition of strings and piano notes. The hook progression never fails to bring a grin to my face. I just freaking love this song because it doesn't try to do too much while still a accomplishing so much. I think that if I could recommend one song this year to anyone, it would be Parking Lot. But despite all of that, my favorite song of 2021 is Knees by Injury Reserve. In a year of personal growth that never seemed quite enough, this song hit me extra hard. It's been a really shitty year if I'm being frank. The setbacks that I've had in my personal life just really suck and have made me feel like a failure and that I'm just not up to the task. Then I heard Knees by Injury Reserve. Knees hurt me when I grow, and that's a tough pill to swallow because I'm not getting taller. Please, is there any way I can grow? Please. I mean, yeah! Jesus, same here, man! The added heaviness of this being one of the last songs that Steppa J. Groggs recorded before his untimely death is also massive. If you know anything about this group and are aware of his passing, then I definitely recommend you watching the music video because I certainly cried when I saw it for the first time. The instrumental is so spacey with these pregnant pauses between the bass pulses. It doesn't even feel like a song at times, more like a collection of disjointed sounds. It's truly revolutionary in its approach, which also makes it a great song. But for me, it's the emotional baggage that truly brings it to the next level, which is why I'm incredibly confident in saying that this is my favorite song of 2021. It might not make me the happiest, and it might not make me get up and dance, but it's the song that I needed the most this year. I could gush on and on about this track, but I should probably close out the video. So yeah, that's it. Those are my 20 favorite tracks of 2021. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you got some good recommendations from this video. Maybe you've heard all of these songs. Maybe you've heard none of them. Let me know what are some of your favorite tracks of 2021 in the comments below. Be sure to check out my 10 favorite EPs video that dropped a couple of days ago. And subscribe so you can be ready when the 30 favorite albums of 2021 video drops. It'll be sometime this week. I'm not exactly sure yet. I'm getting to it. Be sure to subscribe for other videos like So You're Interested In, a show where I break down an artist's discography to give you a great starting off point to dive into their catalog, as well as Stacks of Wax, a show where I go through my record collection alphabetically and just show off what I got. Once again, I thank you very much for tuning in and watching this video, and until I see you next time, happy listening.